All right, so welcome once again to everybody who has just joined us, and I'm sure you're going to be uh, greatly blessed by this session. But let's get uh, even deeper into it. All right, so this is the background. You know, the Bible says in Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 2 to 3, so then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak, uh, it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it because it will surely come, it will not tarry. The first thing here is that you need to write it down, you know. Um, a lot of people have got things in their heads and they have not written it down. And I'm going to tell you a story in a moment. You know, people have ideas in their head. People have things they would like to do. People have dreams. They have visions. They have all, all these sorts of things in their head, but they actually have not documented it. They haven't written anything down. But the Bible says, write the vision. It is so important. That's why I've asked everyone today, make sure you have got a notepad Make sure you have got something to write with. You know, make sure you have got something to uh, document uh, what it is that you want to accomplish in 2023. He says the vision helps you to run, right? Some people are lazy on the couch. They're not doing anything. Some people are laissez-faire, complacent about what is happening to them. They're not taking responsibility for what's happening around them or what's happening to them. Some people are not trying to move towards any goal or move towards any outcome, you know. But the Bible says that when you have a vision, when you write down that vision, it helps you to run. You know, you could be moving much faster and achieving much further and much more than you are today if you had a vision, if you had a goal, if you had something that you were working with and running towards. It says that the vision is for an appointed time. So the vision gives you a time frame, right? You can set a time frame for the vision. You can set a time frame for the goal. You can set a time frame for what it is you want to accomplish or what it is that you want to achieve. And so in writing the vision, in getting the um, inspiration to run, there is a time frame. The vision is for a point of time. And then it says that the vision speaks at the end. Right, you know, when you look back at 2023 and all the things that happened in your life in 2023, you know, the, the, the one of the major differences between a lot of people in this virtual room today is what they set out to accomplish at the end of 2023, right? Because it says at the end it will speak. So the goals you set at the beginning of 2023 were speaking for you at the end of 2023. If you did not set any goals, well, they spoke for you. If you set goals, they would have spoken for you, right? And it's not just the goals you set at the beginning of the year. It's also the goals that you set as you went through the year as well. And then final piece is that he says, you know, uh, well, he says, you, you do it, tarries, wait for it. So patience is required. But where I really wanted to go to is that he said, it will surely come. It will surely come. It always comes to pass, right? If you set your vision, if you set your goal, if you walk with it, if you plan for it, if you wait for it, it will come to pass, right? Don't get distracted. In this 2024 that God has proclaimed as a year of heaven and earth for Kingswood International Church, you know, the responsibility does not rest with God to make heaven and earth happen for us. The responsibility rests with us. We need to receive what God has made available already in the finished work of Christ for us. So the difference between the beginning and the end of 2024 for you are the goals that you are going to set to achieve in this year, right? The difference between the beginning and the end of this year will be the goals that you have set out to achieve. And I want to say more about this by sharing a story, story with you. In 1979, a group did a study on Harvard MBA program graduates, right, in 1979. And they, they asked the graduates about their goals. 3%, 3 of the graduates from that Harvard MBA program had written down their goals for the next 10 years. What do you want to accomplish in the next 10 years? What do you want to accomplish after you graduate from school? 
3% of those graduates had written down their goals, right? Another 13%, right, had an idea of their goals, right? Another 13% were kind of clear what it was that they wanted to accomplish. And this is what I want to do when I graduate from the program. But they had not written it down, right? Which means that the other 84% had no goals, had no idea what it is that they wanted to accomplish. There was just nothing. 10 years after, in 1989, they, they, they go out and find this graduate to understand exactly what it is that is happening with them 10 years after. The 13% that had goals in their minds for what they were going to do after they graduated were earning double what the 84% were earning, right? At that 10-year point, those who had an idea of a, or a goal in their minds were earning double what the other 84% that had no goals were earning. The 3% that had written their goals were earning, listen to this, everybody, listen to this, the 3% were earning 10 times what the 97% were earning. 10 times. The only difference was the variables within the goals that they had set and the things that they were doing. But the 3% were earning 10 times what the other 97% were earning. When you think about your life, when you think about where you are today, when you think about where you ended in 2023, you need to ask yourself, what goals did you really set for yourself? What goals did you put in front of you that you were running with, that you were seeking or trying to achieve? Because the presence of goals or the absence of goals is really impacting your life significantly. And what I need you to do is to begin to think about how you are going to set goals for yourself in 2024 so that you can make a difference in your life. And, and I want us to kind of plow a bit more with this. The Bible says in Psalm 1 and verse 3, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaves also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. It is the thing that you are doing that God blesses. All right? Let me say it again. It is the thing that you are doing that God blesses. All right? Goals ensure that you are doing something. Goals ensure that you are running in a specific direction. You are trying to accomplish or achieve something in your life that God can bless. All right? And then you can measure that as you go through the year. You can measure your progress. You can measure the achievement. You can see whether or not you're on track. You can kind of follow that. But the Bible says it is what the righteous man does that prospers. It is what the righteous man is walking on that prospers, right? And so we are kind of getting together today to ensure that you have got something that you are targeting, something that you are working on, something that you are working toward, okay? That is so important. Why do people not set goals, all right? People don't set goals because they think goals aren't important, right? And you, and you find a lot of people around the world today whose lives are in a medical state because they have not set goals, right? People are like, look, I am just going to live my life. I am going to take every day as it comes. You know, I'm not going to, you know, think about the future. I don't want to stress myself thinking about the future. I don't want to stress myself setting goals. You know, they think goals are not important, right? Another group of people don't just know how to set goals, right? They've never set goals. You know, people went to school for 10, 15 years, and nobody ever told them how to set a goal for themselves. You know, people study and basically whatever results they get is what they get. They, they, they don't have any aspirations or any goals that they're trying to achieve in relation to their academic excellence or achievement. All right. People are afraid of failure. I don't want to set a goal and I don't meet it. So let me not even set a goal. I don't want to fail. So let me not even try so that that way, you know, nothing is lost. Nothing, not, nothing is lost. But if you, if you don't venture for anything, if you don't try anything, you're not going to achieve anything either. 
And finally, people are afraid of rejection. People are kind of thinking, what will people say, right? What will people say if I don't meet my goals, right? Which is the reason why you don't have to tell everybody what your goals are, all right? Which is the reason why you can, you can write your goals and you can keep them to yourself and walk to them, achieve them, go after them. You don't need to publish them. You don't need to tell everybody. Unless God is asking you to announce something to the world, you actually don't need to tell anybody what your goals are. So the fear of rejection should not hinder you from achieving your goals or going after your goals. And so my hope today is that through this seminar, through this discussion, through this work that we're going to do together today, you'll be able to overcome these challenges that so many other people are facing. In fact, some people are not coming to this session today because they think setting goals is not important. And people are like, look, I don't want to struggle myself with that. I don't want to set goals that I'm not going to achieve. I don't want to raise my hopes. You know, people are like, I don't want to raise my hopes. You know, but at the end of the day, hope is an anchor for the soul, right? Hope is something that we that ties us down, that helps us to become established and rooted and grounded, right? So you must have hope. Praise God. You, you must have hope for the future, hope for a better life, hope for things to progress, for things to develop, for things to get better. And there are people today who are, maybe are sleeping, who are eating and drinking, and are not here to kind of think about their future, think about setting goals for the year and accomplish goals. And there are people who are not here today who have already done this. You know, they are, they've dusted everything. They've got their goals set up. And they're ready for 2024. And I'm really excited. But my, my hope today is that through this session, through this seminar, you can get to that place where you've got some goals you know, out. Uh, you've got some draft. You, you kind of have an idea of what it is you want to do. You have an idea of where you're going. And then you can build on that after this session is over. All right. So let's, let's, get, um, let's get some activity going. All right. I want you right now to write any 10 goals you want to achieve 10 goals 10 things 10 you know um aspects of your life 10 areas just 10 goals 10 goals you know maybe you are studying and you want to you want to set a goal to achieve a distinction in your first degree in your master's degree you know, maybe you are an employee and you want to, you know, uh, raise your income by X amount of money. You know, what is it that you want to do? 10 goals. Come on. I want you to write 10 goals right now. Find 10 goals. Write 10 goals. Okay. Everybody go for it. 10 goals. Let's get busy. Wherever you are, 10 goals. Anything, anything whatsoever. All right. No holds barred. If you had no limits, if you had no restrictions, if money was not a problem, if you had everything and everybody you needed, what 10 goals would you write for yourself? All right, 10 goals, 10 goals. Come on, stop punching away at the keyboard. Start writing, you know, um, on your paper, on your pad. 10 goals, okay? Let's get busy. Come on, everybody, let's get busy. Let's get busy, let's get busy, let's get busy. Get 10 goals going. All right, what have you got? 10 goals, 10 goals. Have you got your 10 goals written down? What are those 10 goals going to look like? What are those 10 goals you want to achieve? Just 10 of them. Just 10 goals, 10 goals, all right? If anybody has, uh, if anybody has gotten to their 10 goals, let me know. 10 goals, 10 goals, 10 goals, 10 goals, 10 goals. All right, let me know if you've gotten to your 10 yet. Anybody there who's gotten to their 10, let me see you. Let me see you write a comment if you've gotten to your 10.
10 goals, 10 goals, 10 goals. Come on. Who's got 10? Think, think about the things you want to see happen for you in 2024. If there were no limits, no obstacles, no restrictions, uh, no budget, budgetless. Oh, somebody's got 10 already. Great. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? <laughs> All right. So people are still typing. So people are still typing. Okay. I've got a second. Somebody else with 10 goals. Just keep it coming. 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 Keep the goals coming. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. It's great to see some people have got their goals. Somebody's like, Pastor Amy, why, why are you making people kind of, you know, move, move, move? Okay, somebody else has got their 10 goals. Good, 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 good. Good, good, good. Okay, I see another person has got their 10. That's great. That's great. I don't want you to think too hard at this point. I just want you to kind of go, okay, these 10 things, boom, 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 boom. All right? Don't think too hard now. Uh, I don't want you to be a professor right off the start. I want you to kind of move your way, you know, gradually into that space uh, in setting your 10 goals. All right, set, set those 10 goals, set those 10 goals. All right, more people are getting there. Yep, that's great. That's great, that's great. Thumbs up, thumbs up. All right, more people are getting there. That's great. Good to see that. All right, more people. In fact, all these uh, people saying I've got mine, I've got mine, I, I can now see different people who are in the meeting because cameras are still not on. What's going on? I'm not seeing cameras on. People, show your face, show your face, show your face, your, your beautiful face. One of your goals in 2024 is to show your face. <laughs> turn, up, turn up with your camera on ready for 2024. Right, so let's let's see those goals. Let's see those goals. Good, 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 good. I saw a, I saw a snip of some people just now. Where have they disappeared? Okay, more people have got there. <laughs> okay, factory reset. All right, please um, get your get your get your thing going. And, uh, and let's see you. Let's see you. Let's get your profile shot. Even if it's just your profile shot, let me see some faces. Especially if, if you're, you know, all dressed and everything, right? Show yourself. All right. So some people, a lot of people have now got their goals, you know, in, in the house. So that's great. That's absolutely great. All right. Can anybody share their 10 goals on the chat? Anybody that can share their 10 goals on the chat. If you can share your 10 goals on the chat, please throw it in, right? And if you're thinking, oh, Pastor Emmy, I'm not showing anybody my 10 goals, you can send me a private message. And then, you know, I can just talk about, I want to talk about 10 goals, right? So you can send me a private message, right? I'm not going to say your name. If you're thinking, oh, I don't want people to see it, just send it to me privately. And then I can, I just want to use it as an example. Right, so be my example today. Who's, who's going to help me be my example? Maybe one of your goals this year is to be more visible. You know, somebody talk about your goal could be visibility. Uh, I want the 10. I want the 10. Send me 10. Send me 10. Send me the 10. Send me 10 goals. Send me the 10. Send me the 10 goals. 
right. Oh, please uh, send it to me on Kings of London as well. I can see people are sending it to Emmy Akinaja, but please send the 10 goals to Kings of London. All right. If you can send the 10 goals to Kings of London, that would be great because I can see that people are sending it to, to my account on, um, on Zoom. Okay, okay, I got it, I got it, I got it, yeah. So send to me, send me the 10 goals. Okay, so um, so I've got, um, yep, yep, brilliant, brilliant, got it, got it, got it, thank you very much. All right, so I've got um, 10 goals here, right? Uh, one is uh, personal and physical development, uh, successful business, uh, developing self-care, uh, develop myself or skills in um, doing some, a particular thing, uh, savings, clear skin, clear skin, very important, uh, increase, increase of income by 10 uh, or 20,000, uh, to read more, Registry, uh, traditional wedding, debt cancellation, very important. So these are 10 goals that somebody has quite happily shared with us. Uh, I'm going to come back to this in a moment. I can see that I have another uh, set of goals that I can share. All right, uh, another set of goals. So to be deeper in God, uh, safety and divine provision. Uh, get a job with at least thirty thousand pounds starting salary. I like the at least. Uh, clearance of all debts. Uh, getting a a job that is sponsored by an employer, so visa sponsorship. Financial settlement. Uh, passing a driving test. Getting a car. Getting uh, their own house. Um, accommodation is sorted and to give at least 200 pounds monthly towards the work of God, all right? So that is another set of goals. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Well done uh, to those individuals who shared their goals and to everyone who's done work on their goals, all right? And you know, when you are, when you are working on your goals like this, you know, so I don't, I don't wanna, Go into too much detail, but these are these are really good goals. And when somebody is saying this, are, this is a really good start. This is a this is a good place to start, right? Increase of income by ten to twenty thousand pounds per annum. Very achievable, you know. Depending on where you are in your journey, that looks like a very achievable goal, you know. Whether you want to do that by the end of this year, or you want to give yourself a bit more time to achieve that, that looks pretty good. Uh, you know, developing self care. Uh, that you probably need to unpack a bit more to kind of say what it is that you want to do in terms of developing self-care, uh, personal and physical development. Again, that is something you need to unpack a bit more so that you can kind of talk about exactly what it is that you're saying you want to achieve in that space. All right, uh, getting sponsorship is a very good goal and it can help you to take certain steps to achieve that goal. Now, one thing that I would like everyone to do while I'm just, you know, walking my way through these different goals that people have shared is to see if you can break your goals into the same section, right? So if you have goals that are talking about finances, can you kind of map them together and kind of highlight, okay, those, that's finances over there. If you have goals talking about your physical health and maybe well-being, you can kind of go, oh, that's my health and well-being over there. If you have goals talking about a job or a promotion, you know, or getting into a new field or sector, you can maybe put that around your career. So can you kind of, you know, if you have goals around, you know, planting a church or doing mission work, you know, for the work of the ministry in 2024 or beyond, you can kind of put that around ministry, you know, things like that. You know, if you have goals, like, you know, somebody said, oh, I want to get deeper in God, you know, so spiritual, you know, you can kind of break your goals into those different sections. So if you can do that, and I know that because some of you wrote it on the page, you may not be able to move them around, but you can kind of highlight the section, right? Think of a section for your goal and kind of put that section next to your goal. Kind of go, yeah, I want a goal in that area, so I'm just going to 
you know, I'm going to put that name on the end of it. I'm going to put that on the end of it. So kind of put that on the end of your goal. You know, break your goals into the sections and kind of see how you can map, match them, right? Where have you basically got lots of goals? You know, because if you're kind of going, oh, I want to get a new job or I want to get a promotion or I want to, you know, go into a new field, I want to develop my skills and my career. We're kind of all talking about career, right? So if you've done 10 goals, and you've mapped them, you kind of go, well, I've done 10 goals quite all right, or four of them are in the area of career, or two of them are in the area of finances, or oh, I've only got one on health. You know, you can kind of reflect on your goals and kind of map them in that way. Oh, somebody has sent me, oh, some people have also sent me, oh, thank you very much. I didn't know that uh, people have sent me. So somebody's got something on spirituality, uh, to study and meditate God's word more, uh, physical health, to drink water more and exercise more, Finance to save 10 pounds every day for 365 days. So that is to, to save 3,650 pounds by the end of the year. A business to hit 200,000 this year on my online business. Family to keep in touch and pray more for my family. Friends to keep in touch with friends more. Personal growth to listen to inspiring podcasts this year. Somebody else said pay off debt, start a course for career development. Save more money in 2024. Read true four gospels monthly. So they want to read the four gospels every month. Uh, they want to go on more dates with their spouse. They want to pray for at least an hour every day. They want to visit more people. They want to go on evangelism. They want to get a mortgage and they want to read a book monthly. That's pretty good. Uh, somebody wants to go to the gym more often, at least four times a week. They want to complete their desired certifications before the end of the year. They want to acquire a home in the UK. Uh, they want to get into a relationship, marriage, companionship. They want, to, they want to read at least two books a month, eat more healthy, healthy and lose weight. They've got 80 kg as the target. Uh, they want to improve the relationship with their parents. They want to help their sister settle down and start a career. Uh, in animation, they want to achieve financial security, so 40,000 pounds per annum and career advancement. They want to tithe more often to the church, at least a certain amount every month, all right? So, you know, so I look at some of these goals, and some of the things that we have to think about is, you know, how much of this can we really accomplish in one year, right? Uh, how reasonable are the goals in terms of wanting to achieve some of these things? Yeah, some of these goals, you might need to look at them and kind of think to yourself, look, I need to, I need to push this out a bit. It's going to take me three years to kind of, you know, establish the foundation, build the lane, put the lane blocks on, and then have something that is completely ready and achievable, right? Where, where, when will I get there? But some of these goals, you might need to split them out a bit and kind of say to yourself, look, uh, this will probably take me three years to achieve. Maybe this will take me five years to achieve. And maybe this will take me 10 years to achieve. But the important thing is that you have got goals down, right? But, but, but having done this exercise, and thank you for everyone who has engaged with us, I only hope that all of the people who are online today have written down 10 goals. You may not have shared them, but I want to believe that you have written down 10 things that you want to accomplish in 2024 because we're going to come back to those 10 things. And the reason why I said we want to come back to those 10 things is because there's a very pivotal step that I jumped on purpose, right? <laughs> we jumped, you know, like step, step zero, if I could call it that. If step one was writing down your goals, right? If it was, then we jumped step zero. So let's go back and look at step zero together. All right? Let's go back and look at step zero together. The Bible says this is Psalm 127 and verse 1. Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows. For so he gives his beloved sleep. His step zero is that you need to ask God to reveal to you what he wants you to aim for or to do, right? 
we, we start with God. Even every year, every time, you know, it can be the middle of the year, it can be the end of the year, whatever it is that you want to set goals for your life, right? This is your life. And God gave you this life. God is the designer of your life. He is the source. He is the sustainer of your life. So everything comes from him. Everything flows from him. What God is the source of, God sustains, right? What God is the designer of, God cares for. God takes care of it. Now, God is the one who created us. God is the one who designed our lives, and God takes care of us. But for us to, to set goals that are backed up by God, we must be in sync with God. You know, on Sunday, I was sharing with the church that, you know, if we pray according to the will of God, the Bible tells us that God hears us and God will answer our prayers because we have the confidence that he's heard us because we're praying according to his will. And the Bible also says in John 16, 7, that if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you will and it shall be given to you. So in one place, he's telling us that if we pray what the will of God is, we're going to get it. In another place, he says you will ask what you will and you will receive it. Now, the only way those two scriptures can be right is that in your life, the will of God becomes your will. When the will of God becomes what you will for yourself, you will ask what you will, and it shall be given to you, right? So the first place that we need to start where setting our goals are concerned is to start with God. What would you have me do? Now, somebody might say, well, if I set my goals, some of these things are natural things. Why do I even need to engage God before I set these goals? Because there are times when what you are planning or, or setting as a goal for yourself is below what God wants to actually accomplish in your life in that year over the next three to five years. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. I know the plans I have for you. They are of good and not of evil to give you a hope in your final outcome, to give you a future and a hope, to bring you to a desired end. You know, I've, I've read that scripture many times. I know that, oh yeah, God has a plan for me that is a good plan and it's going to bring me to a good place. But one day I had a revelation that sometimes the things I'm planning for myself can be way below what God is planning. And so I need to kind of connect to the plan of God so that I can ensure that, you know, I have got back in. You know, there's this song that everybody really loves to sing at the moment. It says, I've got back in all, you know. So the thing is, you want your goals to have backing, right? Not just you, you want the goals that you're setting for 2024 to have backing. And one of the ways that you can get the backing of God is if God is in your goals right from the start. So you are interested in what is God's plan for you where 2024 is concerned, right? What is God's purpose for your life, right? Because when the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable. Right, you might set goals for your life that are in the complete opposite direction of God's purpose and plan for your life. Right, so when we say set goals for the year, we're not just saying, Yeah, I just pick stuff out of the air. No, you need to understand that God has the purpose and a plan for your life. Everything that is, everyone that is born into this world, whatever the circumstances of their birth may be, whether it was planned or not, has a divine purpose from God. An understanding of the purpose of God for you helps you to direct your life in the direction of God's purpose for you. It helps you to set your goals in the direction of God's purpose for you. All right? And it's so important that you understand this because when you understand that God has a purpose and a plan for your life and you have connected with God in the place of devotion, you have connected with God in the place of prayer, then the purpose and plan of God for your life influences your motivation for these goals. The purpose and plan of God for your life will influence your values. You know, I was having a conversation with my colleagues yesterday, and they were talking about how, you know, they were going to do something, you know, and it just reeked of a lack of integrity. And I was like, I cannot do that because one of my values is integrity, right? You know, I live by the word, and God's word is full of integrity. God is full of integrity. He's not a man that should lie or the son of man that should repent. If he has said something, he would do it. If he has promised something, he would deliver on that promise, right? So I was like, no, I, can't, I cannot do that because it is contrary to my value of integrity. I cannot lie. I will not lie, right? And so I thought my goals are a reflection of my values. 
My goals are a reflection of my motivation. My goals are a reflection of the purpose and plan of God for my life. I am not going to try and achieve something that I know is going to be contrary to the plan and purpose of God for my life. And you need to come to this place in fellowship with God, in communion with God, where you know that your goals are in line with the purpose and plan of God for your life. And so you need to ask yourself, why do you want to achieve the things you want to achieve? You know, why do you want to achieve the things you've written down? What is your motivation? What is behind the things you want to achieve? Another thing that, you know, uh, fellowship and communion with God will help you to achieve is that you will find the things that God has given you grace for. There are some things you want to achieve in your life, some fields you may want to come into, some goals you are trying to come across or to achieve. And the thing is, have you got grace for it? Have you got grace for it? And you remember in Matthew 25, Jesus tells the parable of talents. He says that the master gives somebody 10 talents, or five talents. The master gives somebody two talents. The master gives somebody one talent. And the talents were given to them according to their abilities. Now, like it or not, every one of us has got our own ability. Some people's ability covers the five talents. Some people's ability covers the two talents. Some people's ability covers the one talent. If you never try and achieve anything in your life, you will never know if your capacity is a five, a two, or a one. If you sit down and don't do anything like the person with the one talent did, you will never know what your capacity is. But in fellowship and in communion with God, you understand who you are. You understand what you can do and what you are graced for, and then you are able to set goals that reflect the grace of God in your life and the talents that God has given you. And that is why, you know, that is so important for you to understand the purpose and plan of God for your life. It is so important for you to understand the grace of God in your life and the gifts that God has given you. Because it will help you not be in competition with others. Oh, that person has done this, so therefore I must set goals to do the same. Listen to me, if you are trying to compete with somebody else, you might be taking your life in a completely wrong direction. You know, don't, we, we can look at what other people are doing. We can be inspired by what other people are doing, but we mustn't copy them and we mustn't compete with them. Now, if you are running a business, your business may be in competition with others, but you as an individual are not trying to live your life in competition with others. So when people say, oh, my friends have done this, and I haven't, you know, some people say, look, in a place of reflection, you may realize that some of your friends are no longer here today. Some of your classmates that you finished from university are no longer here today. Some of the people that you went to high school with are no longer here today. So, I mean, if you wanted to be balanced about that perspective, there are so many things that people have become today that you do not want in your life, you know. But at the same time, it doesn't mean that you cannot be inspired by them. You can be inspired. As a pastor, I am inspired by what other pastors are achieving for God. I am stirred up. I am saying to myself, I must do everything that God wants me to do in my space so that I can achieve everything that God has set out for me to achieve. Right? And, and don't, get, be, don't be burdened by time. The Bible says that we looked at in Habakkuk 2, 2, 3, just do it, tarries, wait for it. Listen to me. God set a goal right, for Jesus to come before the foundation of the world was, was even formed. And he said it in the Garden of Eden when he was talking to Adam and Eve that, the, the, you know, the seed will come. So he set a goal. But it took two years for God to put everything in place for that goal to be achieved. And so I need you to kind of reflect on timing a bit, you know. Um, if God had to put so many things in place before Jesus to come and achieve that goal of Jesus coming to save humanity, then there might be some things that you also need to put in place for you to achieve your goals and you don't want to be in a rush because you are competing with somebody else. Don't try to be somebody else. Be everything that God has designed you to be. Be everything that God has designed for you to be. All right? So let's look at this. God is the architect. All right? God is the architect. Did you see that verse? Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early. You're, you're trying to achieve your goal. Like look at verse 2. It's like you're you are working hard to achieve something that God is not behind, that God is not backing. It says it is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows. It says for it gives his beloved sleep. See, God is going to give you something. 
that is not going to stress you. You are too blessed to be stressed. I am not saying that you're not going to work hard. I am not saying that you're not going to be diligent. I am not saying that you don't need to be resilient. But God gives his philosophy. God does not put you in a position where you are now going to be struggling in life, trying to achieve the goals that you have set. No, no, no. He gives his philosophy. Why? Because when God is the architect of your life, when God is the architect, right, you, you realize that you are building what God has designed. Now, God has already finished his design for your life. God is not doing anything more. The Bible says that God did the work. God rested. You know, God has done what he needs to do. All right? You are the one that now needs to work on the design. Are you listening to me? Everything that you see and experience in your life is your doing. Now, I'm about to do the school of hard knocks, right? Everything that you see in your life right now is your doing. You are the builder. God is the architect. You are building the things that you have seen God. Just the same way God gave Noah the design of the ark, and Noah had to build the ark. God has given it. God has a design for your life. You collect that design from God, and you start building. You are the builder of your life. You are responsible. Now, say this with me. Wherever you are, say this. I am responsible. All right, make it an anthem. I am responsible. Come on, people, wherever you are, just say it. I am responsible. Right? If you can't speak where you are, write it in the chat. I am responsible. I am responsible. Listen to me. You know, some people haven't, I am responsible. haven't taken responsibility. Thank you very much. Some people haven't taken responsibility yet for their lives. Some people are blaming everybody and everything for where they are. You know, something happened when they were young. This person did this to me. That person did this to me, the government, the conservative party, the conservatives, no. You know, everybody is after everybody else except themselves. You are responsible. Some people even blame God. Honestly. Honestly, God is the father of light. He does not do evil. He does not tempt with evil. Neither can he be tempted with evil. God is good. Some people blame God. Some people blame family. Some people blame friends. You know, some people blame, look, you are responsible. <laughs> Let me tell you one decision I made when I was younger. And I had friends in junior high school. And all my friends in junior high school were going to the science classes in senior high school. And so I followed all my friends to science class in senior high school. Listen to me. I was not designed for science. I'm telling you. I, I, I failed dramatically <laughs> in science class. You know, and it was too late. I got to my final papers in my senior high school, and I realized that I'm in the wrong class. I'm in the wrong class, people. In the wrong class. Now, I could blame my friends. Why did you lead me to science class? You know, but people just turned around and said, what were you doing following people to science class? You know, I should have been in commercial or in the arts, maybe more commercial. But I went to science class, and I suffered for it. I failed many exams, but when I switched to commercial, you know, to economics is, is I see the world just opened up for me, you know, and I, and I was like, oh, I can't succeed. I know how to pass exams and to write papers, you know. I, I was never that, I was never bad. I was just in the wrong place. And maybe some of you have been in the wrong place, but you need to take responsibility. Remind yourself, folks, that you are where you are and you are what you are because of what you have done or failed to do in the past. That is so important, that you need to take responsibility for where you are. The good news is that you don't have to stay where you are, all right? What you do is what you get. And, and this is very important for us to talk about goals today, right? Because, I'm, like I said, I'm laying a foundation before we get into the thick of things, all right? I'm laying a foundation, all right? In a larger sense, you are earning today exactly what you decided to earn, no more, no less. Right, and, and I've shared you know stories like this in church where I set a goal for a particular income that year. I, I applied for a job, I got interviewed, I got offered the job, and they offered me a lower salary. And I said, No, thank you very much for the offer. I am not accepting that salary. This is the salary that I want. And the individual on the other end of the phone said, I do not have the authority to offer you that salary. And I said, Please go and speak to the person who has the authority to offer me that salary. They said they would, and then either they came back or the person came back to me directly and said, I understand you want more money, and I'm offering you more money, right? 
the reason I pressed for more money is because I had a goal, right? I wasn't just guessing. I wasn't just thinking I wanted more money. That was my goal in that year to get that particular amount. I saw that they were offering that particular amount in the salary range. And the moment they offered me that amount, I stopped my negotiation. You see, if they had offered me less than the amount, I would have continued negotiating. But the moment they offered me what my goal was, I stopped negotiating, right? Your goals are determining your life, right? And if you don't have any goals, oh my goodness, you are like the wind tossed to and fro. You, you, are, you are unstable in all your ways. <laughs> so setting goals is very important, all right? If you are not happy with your current income, you need to decide to earn more. Set it as a goal, make a plan, and get busy doing what you need to do to earn the amount that you want to earn, all right? And we're going to talk about that in, in a moment, right? And I need everyone to kind of understand this, right? I'm not trying to condemn you. I'm not even judging you, and I'm not trying to condemn you, but you are responsible for your life, right? And the moment you take responsibility for your responsibility, <laughs> all right, you are, you are going to break through big, big time. I want you to know that you are the CEO of your life, right? So you need to run your life like a company or you need to run your life like a sole proprietorship, like self-employment, like a self-employed. You need to run your life. You are responsible for the overall management strategy of your life. You download from God and then you run with it, right? He says, I will stand my watch to see what he will say to me and what I will answer when I'm talking to you. He said, write the vision and make it in your tablets that he may run that week. All right, setting goals, making plans, establishing measures, and performing to get results. You are responsible for the overall management strategy of your life. And the more responsibility you accept, if you accept responsibility for your marriage, you accept responsibility for your finances, you accept responsibility for your career, you accept responsibility for your health, the more responsibility you accept, the greater the amount of control you feel you have. I'll say it again. The more responsibility you accept for your life and for the different areas of your life, the greater the amount of control you feel you have. You see, when I heard as a young person, as a teenager, when I heard that I was responsible for my life, I was responsible for where I end up in the future, man, I, you know, I stopped blaming my dad. You know, I grew up uh, and my dad had left home, you know, uh, was broken marriage. He and my mom were separated. You know, oh, my goodness. <laughs> I hope you can still see me clearly. You know, he wasn't there all the time. You know, things were not the way we would have loved for it to be as a family. All right? Things were not perfect. And I could have blamed him. You know, I grew up in a home where I had no dad. My dad eventually came back when I was a full-grown adult and in a relationship. But, you know, uh, you know, he eventually came back, but, you know, for the, you know, developing years of my life, you know, as a teenager, you know, going through puberty, you know, having all these feelings for girls and all those things, all those, all those phases, becoming very serious with God and passionate and doing the work. Of, you know, my dad was like a phone call away, but he wasn't there at home you know, to kind of do the work that was needed. And I, and I could put that on him and say, look, I, I am where, and, it, and when I was born, you know, he had so much money, so much money, like, so much money. And then, you know, where do it was time for me to start enjoying the money? You know, all the money had disappeared because of decisions that had been made. So I could put a lot of blame on my dad or my parents for the life that I had. But I said, look, okay, I'm going to take responsibility for my life. I am going to set goals for my life and I'm going to work towards achieving those goals. And listen to me, the moment I took responsibility for my life, the lines began to fall in me, to me in pleasant places to achieve those goals. Right, I took control. I was inspired. I was charged. You know, we like to say I was charged to take control of my success in life with God's blessing. Right, and I want you to do that. I want you to be inspired. I want you to take charge. I want you to know that you you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. You know, my son was. Uh, my wife was pregnant with our son. We're trying to get a bigger place, and they were saying, it got to a point, they said to us, look, you need to be earning 30 times what uh, the rent is. And at the time, I wasn't even any way through. I thought that that was outrageous, first of all. 
that I, that they said I have to be earning thirty times the rent. Right? Think about it. Are you are you currently if you are, if you are renting at the moment, are you earning thirty times the rent? You know. So they said, look, you need to be earning thirty times the rent. And I thought to myself, oh my goodness, thirty times. You know. So I said, okay, what does that what does that look like? So I got a figure. I think at the time it was about maybe thirty grand. You know, thirty grand was a good ballpark figure to kind of cover the rent and expenses and all of that. So I thought, okay. I'm going to go for that. So I set a goal to, to achieve 30,000 pounds per annum. And I said, what, I said, what do I need to do to achieve this? So I, I, I discovered what I needed to do and I put those things in place. And I came back to them within six months and I said, look, here's an offer letter showing that I've now got more, I actually got more than 30 times the rent. I said, here's the offer letter that demonstrates that I've gotten it. Let's go and look at the property, right? So the world may not be fair to everybody. It's like, okay, you know, the government may not be fair. Okay, the cost of living crisis may not be fair. The, the war in Ukraine is not fair. You know, there are so many things that are not fair, right? There are all of these different challenges that people are having everywhere. All of these things are not fair, but at the end of the day, you know, you need to take responsibility and say, look, I'm going to move my life forward to say. All right, so let's go on. It says in Proverbs 4 and verse 18, it says, but the path of the just, the path of the righteous is like a shining sun that gets brighter and brighter even to the perfect day. So we have comfort in this. God wants your life to keep moving forward. God wants you to prosper. God wants you to do well. God wants your life to get better, right? And we have this promise that your life is going to get better. Your path is going to get brighter and brighter onto this, like, you know, the fantastic sun. So just imagine walking down this path. By the time you get to the top, you're going to be seeing the sun in its full glory, you know, and the sun will keep rising. So, you know, wh wherever you are in life today, right, don't let that hinder you. Don't let that stop you. You know, keep moving forward, all right? Come on, say this with me. I will keep moving forward. I will keep moving forward. I will keep moving forward. So I want to share with you, some types of goals, all right, because we're going to go into some more discussions about goals. Well, let's talk about some types of goals, all right? So achievement goals versus habit goals. And, and we saw this in the examples that people share. You know, when you talk about achievement goals, you're talking about accomplishment, all right, things that people want to accomplish. I'm going to get a car. I'm going to get a degree. You know, I'm going to build or buy a house. All right, I'm going to bring 10 people to church. I am going to get married. I am going to travel overseas. All right, those are achievement goals, right? You want to accomplish something. All right, but you know, you also need to have habit goals. All right, these are routines. And listen to me, habit goals are very powerful because even after you have achieved something, your habits will outlast even the things that you achieve. Is somebody listening to me, right? So your habit goals are very important. And so when you're setting goals for the year or beyond, don't just have achievement goals, things you want to receive, things you want to have. Have habit goals, routines that you want to build as you go through the year. So somebody says, I want to pass my driving test uh, in 2024. Well, you can have a habit goal that you are going to spend an hour driving every day or learning to drive every day. All right, somebody wants to get a degree, right? Or maybe wants to get a distinction in their degree, all right? There are different types of degrees. There's pass, there's fail, or maybe you fail, you don't get a degree, right? <laughs> so there's pass, there's merit, there's distinction. So you say, okay, I want to get a distinction. I'm studying, I want to get a distinction in what I'm studying. Well, you can set a habit goal that you're going to go to the library every day for three hours to read, all right? Because a distinction is not just going to happen to you. You need to walk towards a distinction. All right, people say they want to draw closer to God. They want to get deeper in God. What does that actually look like? Well, you can set a habit goal to read the Bible every day for one hour. Right? Somebody put one of their goals that they're going to walk towards praying an hour every day. That is a habit goal. All right? Somebody says, I want to be more healthy. I want to walk more in 2024. But what does that look like? You can set a habit goal that you're going to walk 20 minutes every day in 2024. All right? So 20 minutes every day you're going to walk, right? And like I said, when you set goals, we're going to talk a bit more about this. You have to kind of have a plan for how you're going to achieve them. All right? Somebody says, oh, you know, I want to pray more. Well, you can set a habit goal 
to wake up 6.30 a.m. every morning to join the Kingswood London Prayers, all right? Uh, you can set a habit to fast this year, but you can say, okay, in Kingswood London, they fast every Friday, so I'm going to set a habit to fast every Friday to 4 p.m. Somebody says, I want to bring more people to church. That's my goal. Well, you can make it a habit goal to invite one person to church every week, all right? This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make it a routine that I'm inviting at least one person. If somebody says, oh, I want to develop personally or in leadership or in my career, well, you can make it a habit goal to read one leadership or personal development book every month. And the list goes on and on of the different habits that you can set as goals for yourself, all right? And there is a saying, if you do something for 21 days, it will stick, right? The problem is that most people don't start the other problem is that people start, and then because they stopped one or two days, they then decide not to do it any longer. But the thing is that if you can keep it going for 21 days, it will become part and parcel of you. All right? There are some things that will become second nature to you because you are kept at it. All right? So when you are setting goals for 2024 and beyond, I need you to think, what are the different types of goals I've actually got on my list? So looking at your 10 goals, again, kind of reflect how many of them are achievement goals, and how many of them are actually habit goals that you've got on your list, all right? Achievements are talking about the accomplishments you want to have, and the habits are talking about the routines that you want to deal with. Like I said, habits often exceed goals, all right? They become a part of your lifestyle, and once ingrained, they will help you to continue to succeed even after you have achieved your goal. But let's talk about quality versus quantity goals, all right? Uh, a lot of people are trying to do too many things. You know, I told you to write 10 things. Maybe some people have gotten to 50. All right, so, oh yeah, I want to do all these things. Oh yeah, I'm just going, oh, I've got a flow. Oh, it's just flowing, it's flowing, flowing. I want to do these 100 things in 2024, okay? The reality is that, look, if you put too many things, your focus is going to be scattered all over the place. You need to focus on a few quality goals. Less means more, all right? You don't want a situation where you've written 100 goals for 2024, you, you could not even do 10. You get to the end of the year, so discouraged about all the things. He said, Pastor Emmy said that, you know, setting goals will, will transform my life. Look at my life. You know, nothing has happened. No, 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 no. You don't, don't do too many things, right? Go for quality over quantity. And don't try and do everything in a short period. Some people write their goals and they're like, yeah, by March 2024, all of these things, you know, they are not in a relationship. This is 13th of January. They're not in a relationship. But by March 2024, they want to be married. Listen to me. If you are married by March 2024, there's a problem. Sorry. I don't mean that. I don't mean that miracles don't happen. But if you are not in a relationship today, and you want to be married by March 2024, there's a problem. Right? And, and I can tell you that problem maybe when I do another session on relationship goals. <laughs> don't, don't, don't be married by March 2024. You know, somebody says, Pastor, me, God can do a miracle like that. Listen to me, God is not a charlatan, right? God loves his children too much to set them up for nonsense, okay? All right, let me just put that there and leave it there, all right? So spread your deadlines out, all right? You need to be, be realistic about all that you can achieve in, in, in the first three months and so on and so forth. You know, so you know, think about splitting your, your goals over the next, you know, over the four quarters of the year. How can you spread them out? And like I said, some of them might even be three-year goals that you put to accomplish in 2024. You need to kind of reflect on that. Some of them might require you to build some things in before you can achieve the goal. So it might even take you up to five years, all right? So you need to think about that. And don't try to do everything on your own, all right? Get others to help you, all right? How can you enlist the assistance of others, all right? There was a time when Elijah was like, look, I'm the only person doing all this work. And God told him, okay, go and anoint these three people and they are going to help to fulfill my plans and purposes. All right, Jesus wanted to start his ministry, and he chose 12 disciples to work with him. Okay, so it's so important that in thinking about your goals, you're thinking about the achievement goals, you're thinking about the habit goals, you're thinking about the quality, right, versus the quantity of goals that you're setting for the year. All right, so let's take a, a deep dive now into the actual goal setting. So let's talk about the wheel of a balanced life. All right? Can everybody see this image quite clearly? You've got health, 
and wellness. These are eight key areas of your life, right? Health and wellness, relationships and family, spiritual, personal growth, ministry, right? This is the this is a major thing. Finances, business or career or and career, if you have both, and education, especially for students, right? So if you're a student and you're studying, we kind of make sure that you are in that space uh, where you're doing that. So this is the wheel of a balanced life. If you look at the four items on the left, the four items on the left are talking about the areas of your life where you are imputing things into your life. We're talking about your health and wellness. You know, that's adding to your, your lifespan on earth. You know, you, these are our body requires nurturing so that we can do all the things we want to do. If your body is destroyed, you won't be able to accomplish so many other things. Uh, relationships and family are so important as an input into your life. Spiritual, your relationship with God, your fellowship with God, your communion with God, and just growing in that one-to-one -one, uh, space with God. And then your personal growth, whether it's leadership, whether it's career, whether it's um, other things that you want to grow in, you know, just to develop yourself as an individual, you know, is so important. Personal growth, personal development is so important to have these four areas imputed into your life. But then you've got the output focus areas as well, right? Education, your, your goals in education are going to be to achieve distinction, to get X number of degrees, you know, in the next 10 years. All right, you've got your business and career. You have goals around promotion, goals about getting to a, a certain field or into a certain role. You know, you've got goals around finances. What is that minimum annual income that you want to earn by the end of this year? All right, what is that annual income that you want to earn in the next five years? And it's so important for you to think about that because listen to me. If you don't have such a goal, you're not going to move from where you are. All right, and then ministry. How more or how much do you want to be involved in the work of the ministry this year? What do you want to do in your local church? What do you want to do outside your local church? What is God calling you to do in 2024 that you want to be involved in? You need to ensure that in your life, you have got goals, you know, that kind of fit into these different areas. And I remember that when I was looking at the 10 goals that people shared with me, people did have goals kind of fitting into these different areas, you know? So, and you need to think about that. So somebody that is thinking finances, right? Somebody thinking finances um, might be thinking, oh, hold on. I want to become debt-free. I saw debt cancellation. I saw debt freedom becoming debt-free in people's goals. Somebody says, look, I want to become debt-free. That is the outcome, right? The outcome is that by the end of this year, I am debt-free, all right? But how are you going to achieve that outcome? You need to have a number of objectives, right? The objective is that, you need to earn more money. You need to earn more money, right? So you're thinking finances. I want to be debt-free, right? How are you going to be debt-free? Well, one of the ways you can be debt-free is by earning more money, right? So people, well, debt cancellation is great. But if you have more money and you pay off the debt, you have some change in your pocket, that's even better, all right? There's one thing for all your debt to go, but there's another thing for you to have money in your pocket. So you don't just want to have all your debt great, but you want to have money in your pocket. So you can earn more money. But if you want to earn more money, then you have to think about the activities you need to kind of carry out to earn more money, right? You need to get a new job or a better job or an additional job, maybe, or you need to sell something or sell a number of things, all right? So that's doing business, all right? If you sell something, you will make more money. So sometimes people are saying, you know, I want to clear my debt. But, you know, you can ask yourself, do I have something at home that I can sell, make money, and pay off this debt, Right, because that thing is there in my life, but you know, if I sold it off and got X amount of money, I could actually clear my debt and be debt free. And then all the money that I have, rather than paying that into the debt, I can use that money to invest or to do other things that I need to achieve in my life. Okay, so it's so important for you to think about what the outcome is that you are going for, right? What, what are the objectives that you need to set for yourself to achieve that outcome, right, in terms of your planning? And then what are the activities that you need to do to actually help you to achieve the objectives you set? Okay, so I want us to do an activity right now. There's another activity for you. I want you to write down these eight areas of life, right? Write down these eight areas, and I want you to score yourself over 10, right? In terms of, you know, how well you did, let's, say, let's use 2023, right? In 2020, when you look at 2023, 
How well did you do in these areas over 10? Right? How well did you do in your career? If you're a career person, how well did you do your business? In business, you're a business person. How well did you do in finances, right? Did, did, was there any progress or did you even go backwards in finance? What, what happened in your finances in 2023? Right, let's, let's look at 2023 as a year and let's just map this out. You can just look at your life now. You can say, look, my life as of today, 13th of January, 2024, this is what this looks like, right? Ministry, what does ministry look like? Uh, relationships and family, right? What does relationships and family look like for you? If you're scoring yourself, you know, how much would you score yourself in relationships and family, all right? Just go through that uh, and score yourself. I'm going to give you a few minutes to do that. I'm going to give you a few minutes to do that. Maybe two minutes because I don't want people to just take their time. Ah, oh, let me go and make coffee and everything, and then you know I'll come back and do this. No, Oreo, do it while you're making the coffee. The the hot the tea pot will run away or the coffee pot. All right. What's your score for health and wellness? What is your score for health and wellness, people? <laughs> How much attention are you paying to health and well-being? Right? What is your score for spiritual? Spiritual. Right? What is your score for spiritual? Are you progressing? Are you stagnant? Are you top? Are you bottom? Where, where are you in your journey? All right? So put it, put it, put it to everyone if you've finished. If you've gotten there, if you scored everything, let me know. Let me know. If you scored everything, let me know. All right, have you scored everything yet? Just let me know. Say yes, give me a thumbs up. You know, let me know. Let me know if you scored everything. Any thumbs up, any comments in the chat? Let me know in the chat or with an emoticon or emoji if you have, um, if you have been there yet. Are you there yet? You know. Relationships and family. Are you in a relationship? Are you looking to go into a relationship? Have you got kids? Even if you don't have kids or you're not married, you know, what's the family situation with nephews and nieces or brothers and sisters or parents? You know, there's, there's family, right? Family is very broad. It captures so many things depending on where you are in, in your phase in life. Okay, somebody said they're done with it. That's great. Uh, score yourself. Don't, don't think too much about this cause. If you think too much about it, don't overanalyze the score. The first score that comes to mind, just put that down. That's usually the correct answer. <laughs> oh, my goodness, I've done this again. All right. Whatever your first answer is, is probably the right answer. So just go for it. What is your first response? Right? Your first response is probably the correct response. If you now start overanalyzing, you are adding. Uh, you are adding. Don't worry. You know, God is not going to punish you for your score. Just write the score. Neither am I anyway. Before, before people think, ah, it's Pastor Henry going to meet out some punishment. Neither am I. All right. Okay. Two people. All right. Anybody else done with this? Just score yourself. Score yourself. Okay. Somebody else is done. All right. This is more encouraging now. Three people out of the X number. All right. Yep. Four. Okay. Come on. Keep going. Keep going. Score yourself. Score yourself. Just go. Three, two, four, five, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ah, done. All right. All right. Vera, Mumuna, yeah. Dami, Lola, yes. All right, allow it, as well. All right, I'm seeing more people are popping up. All right, okay. Now, having scored yourself, this is the next thing I want you to do. I want you to split the scores, right? So I want you to score the four items on the left, add your scores for the four items on the left and put that over 40, and then add the scores for the four items on the right and put that over 40. Right? The four items on the left, the four items on the right, and put that over 40. All right? So do the and, – and if, and if you're not good with math, honestly, uh, make that a goal for 2024, yeah? So add the four items on the left. So, you know, six, five, three, two, add that and over 40. You know, five, four, three, two, add that over, over 40. Now, don't forget, the left is the input focus area, and the right is the output focus area, right? The input is stuff coming into your life to make your life, you know, better as an individual, to give you a richer life. 
the output is helping you need to achieve all these things to give you a richer life as well. And you need the balance of the input and the output. But I want to know when you add the scores for the left over 40 and you add the scores on the right over 40, uh, what do you get? Now, people just help me put your scores. Uh, put your scores in the chat. If you can put your scores in the chat, that would be great. All right? See, there's no right and wrong answer. Just put your scores in the chat. I don't want people to feel like, ah, no, I don't want, no. Don't, just give me the number. I don't want to know what you got for each bit. Just give me the number. I don't want to know what you, I don't want you to write, oh, health and wellness, nine. No, I don't want to know if you went to the gym every day, you know, whatever like that. No, just say, just say input, you know, 30, output, 20, something like that. Just do it like that. Ah, there we go. There we go. There we go. All right, just go like that. Just give me some, some figures there. Input, output, input, output. Just give me some figures. All right, go, 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 go. I want to see the chat kind of rushing like on YouTube. It's just pouring up with, with scores. Come on, people. I said it's going to be an engaging session. We need to engage. We need to engage. Come on, help me. Help me here. Help my ministry. Help my seminar. All right, give me some, give me some scores. All right, people are coming. People are coming. People are coming. All right, we're seeing some scores coming through. Come on, if you haven't put anything in the chat yet in this seminar, put something in the chat. Let us know you're with us. This is your time. Put something in the chat. Yep, 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 I see it coming. Oh, yeah, you can send me a direct message if you want. Just send a direct message to Kingswood London, and then uh, I can see it. If you don't want everybody to see your score, you're like, oh, no, I don't want people to see my score. It's like, look, like I said, there's no wrong or right answer. Just write your score. To be honest, you know, sometimes some people will even balloon this because like, ah, we have to post it. Okay, let me increase it. You know, <laughs> I need to make it look good. You know, this is a personal thing for you. So your own self-reflection is important, right? So if for some reason you've mistakenly blown up this cause, well, you know, when we finish the session, you can go and fix it, yeah? Or it's important that you as an individual can kind of look at it and say, look, you know, this is where I believe I am. This is where I believe I'm operating at. You know, that's that's quite important. So let me do that because I want to say some things about your scores that kind of kind of help you uh, in your focus for the year. All right. And I, I need to have the real scores to be able to help you, right? You need to you need to be true to yourself. Uh, like I said, you need to take responsibility for yourself. So um, you know, don't 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 balloon the thing and make it look like, oh yeah, 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 you know, oh I'm hundred of hundred. You know, what are you talking about? You know, we don't mess around. We, we get it right all the time. Okay, so let's see. Any more people happy to share? Any more people happy to share? All right, I think we've got a good, um, I think we've got a good uh, turn out of responses now, which is great. So thank you everyone who has shared. Thank you everyone who is sharing. It's absolutely great to see uh, your reflection of where you think you are. Because this is not me telling you where you are. This is you kind of reflecting on these different areas and saying, oh, when I look at these different areas, this is where I think I am, you know. And I'm sure that as you are doing this exercise, you're kind of thinking to yourself, hmm, I need to do a bit more in that space. Hmm. Okay, I need to think about what I'm going to do over there. I haven't thought much about that. Oh, yeah, I never even gave that much thought. I need to kind of reflect on that. And that, that's quite important. That exercise is quite important for you to do because you kind of need to say to yourself, I know where I am. And I know what I need to do to kind of get past this place, right? So just thinking about, thank you very much to everyone who shared uh, on the chat uh, with me or with everyone, you know. So having scored yourself now, putting all these things together, you might find that some of you are stronger in the output focused area than you are in the input focused area, right? Some of you might feel like, oh, I'm, I'm kind of low on all the areas. And some of you might feel like, oh, I'm quite high in the input focus area than I am in the output focus area, right? So one thing that you need to think about as you're setting your goals for 2024 is you need to think to yourself, if I'm high on the output focus area, then it means I need to do some more work on the input focus area, right? And if you find that you are actually higher on the input focus area, it means that you need to do some more work on the output focus area. You need to set more goals for yourself on the output focus area. Now, if you, have, if you find that you are, you know, low on both, then, I mean, that's a given, right? This will help you to kind of set more goals to achieve both on the input focus and the output focus area across these eight key areas of your life, right? 
Now, somebody might say, so I'm, I'm giving you eight key areas. You know, one of, the, one of the things we said we're going to do in this seminar is to give you key areas for goal setting in 2024. These are eight key areas for you to reflect on and to walk towards. Now, um, there is one other area that I would have liked to put in here. Uh, and so some of you might be thinking, well, I'm not a student, so I wasn't able to score myself well in the output focus area because I'm not a student. Well, that's absolutely fine. You know, this is not like, this is not the Bible, right? This is just a framework for you to kind of manage your goals uh, in your life. And, and I know it's 2024, but you can use this beyond 2024. So if you are not a student, you're not studying in a university or a college or for some professional qualifications, you know, and you don't have goals in that area, one, one thing that you can put in here is another input focus area that I think is very, very important as well. And that is around fun and, and that is fun and creation. Okay, so Vera has asked, which is input focus, which is output focus. So Vera, you see this red line in the middle, everything on the left is input focus. So health and wellness is input, relationships and family input, spiritual input, personal growth is input. And then output, where you're kind of accomplishing things, mm -hmm. like, oh yeah, I'm doing all these things out there. It's ministry, finances, business and career, and education, right? So, you know, when you think about a balanced life, right? So it's all about, you know, the wheel of a balanced life. It's like, you're not just doing stuff out there. Oh yeah, I'm now the latest influencer on TikTok or YouTube. I'm doing all these things that I, I set out to do in 2024. But you're also like, look, I didn't do that. And then my whole family is a complete mess because I didn't give any attention to my family, right? Oh, I've accomplished all these great things. So I don't pray to God anymore because I'm so busy in my life that I have no time for spiritual faith, you know? Or I'm so busy that I can't, I can't even do any personal development. You know, I had this meeting with the section that I need. And I said to them, I said, look, for 2024, the first thing that you need to think about is your own personal and career development. Before you start thinking about how you're going to achieve all the wonderful things you want to achieve in 2024, think about your personal growth, right? Because when you grow, when you develop, then your, your, the level at which you operate becomes even far better, right? Because if you do the same things you've always been doing, you cannot expect a different result, right? And sometimes for your result to change, you need to know more. You need to be exposed to more. You need to be exposed to better. And then that way you can actually do better than what you've done in 2023. All right, that's so important. So I said, look, an area where you need to think about if you're not doing education or students is think about fun and recreation. All right, fun and recreation. What are you going to do for fun and recreation? For some people like Pastor Emmy, fun and recreation. Who has time for fun and recreation? Listen to me, you need to find time. You need to find time to play. All work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. All right, you need to find time to 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 go for a massage. You need to find time, or oh, that's health and wellness. You need to find time to go on a holiday, all right? <laughs> Sometimes I travel and people ask me, how was your trip? I was like, it was work. I have come back tired. That was not a holiday. <laughs> so the beginning of this year, I took the first week of 2024 off and I did not, I was just enjoying my life, just resting. Of course, we hadn't, we hadn't started our 21 day fasting, so I could rest. I can watch TV, I can read a book, I can sleep late, wake up late. I had a couple of meetings, I did do some planning, but generally I just took the first week of 2024 to take it easy. You know, I've got my cinema tickets for 2024 ready. You know, uh, sometimes my family and I will go to the cinema, sometimes I will go by myself, sometimes I will go with my wife. You know, I've got those things planned. You know, I have places I would like to travel to in 2024. Every year I set goals of where I want to travel in 2024 you know last year i set a goal that my family as a whole everybody wife kids everybody were all going to go on holiday somewhere and we went on holiday somewhere you understand you set those goals and those goals come to pass all right so when you think about this don't forget you know even if you don't put it into this wheel make sure you've got something somewhere you know that kind of reflects how you are going to achieve getting uh how you're going to achieve getting your fun and recreation going, all right? Maybe this is the year that you go to Top Park and ride on the on the um, crazy uh, rides that they've got there, you know, and uh, you just achieve everything that you can possibly achieve. We greatly overestimate what we can accomplish in one year, but we greatly underestimate what we can accomplish in five years. And so while you're writing your goals for 2024, like I said, 
reflect on what is what can what will actually be possible in three years reflect on what will be possible in five years and when you are setting goals for yourself today all right if you are setting goals today yes jack would not be a dog boy when you're setting goals you know for 2024 like i said you might want to actually stretch it and set goals for the next five years when the new decade started in 2020 I actually set some goals for the decade, not just for the year. I said, okay, these are the things I would like to see happen in the next 10 years. And I had to think a lot. You know, my kids were like eight or something like that. I was like, okay, but in 10 years' time, he's going to be an adult, right? What are the things I would expect to be happening for him or for her in 10 years' time? I've written those things down. Listen to me. I've written a lot of things down that I want to be done happen by 2030. Some of them have already happened, but some of them haven't because they need to happen then, like, you know, um, if I wanted my son to be driving a car when he was 18, well, he needs to be 18 and get the license and all those things before then to be driving the car at 18. So I have to wait for, what, for him to turn 18 for him to be doing that. But that goal is set, right? He's not going to turn 18 and say, okay, so, you know, how, how do, let's set a goal for you to get the car under 18. No, I've, I've set that goal. You know, I've set goals for my children to be millionaires. You know, well, I started out in Naira first before I moved to pounds. You know what I mean? <laughs> You know, I've, I've always, I, you know, so I've set some of those goals, right? These are just things I said, I want my kids to say they're millionaires, you know, and um, I'm working already to achieve it. So if, if you achieved your goals in this area, and this is something I want you to reflect on when we're talking about the wheel of a balanced life, if you achieved your goals in these different areas, what would your life look like in one year's time, in five years' time, in 10 years' time, right? If you can just think about your life, in 10 years' time, what would you like your life to look like in 10 years' time? And then walk backwards and say, okay, my goal is that in 10 years' time, my life will look like this. Then you're going to figure out, okay, what do I need to do between now and then to achieve that? Right? This is what I want my life to look like in five years' time. This is what I want my life to look like in a year's time. Okay? So I want to just share with you some questions you can ask yourself in a few of these areas. So in finances, you owe it to the important people in your life to be on a growth call to be continually increasing in value, in income, and profit profitability as the year progresses. So what are some of the questions you can ask yourself when you're thinking about your goal setting? How much would I be earning in a year's time, right? What sort of lifestyle would I have? What kind of home would I live in? What kind of car would I drive? What kind of material luxuries would I be providing for myself? And my family, right? What would that look like? How much would I have in the bank? How much would I give in church? You know, I have a goal for what I want to give in church. I saw that one of the people who send their goals had a goal for what they want to give in church. I have a goal for what I want to give in church, right? And I achieve that goal every year, right? I have a goal of what I want to give to God in other ministries and other things outside of church, right? How much would you have in saving and investment each month and each year? I have a goal for my investments every year, and I increase it every year. I want to break the boundaries of last year in investment. I want to break the boundaries of last year in saving. All right? How much would you want to be worth when you retired? Right? How much would you want to be worth? Did you know that people who earn 80 grand and above in the United Kingdom are in the top 5% of earners in this country? Did you know? that those who earn 100K and above are the top 1% of those who earn in this country, right? If you want to be in the top 5% of earners in this country, you need to be aiming for 80K minimum income in the year. If you want to be in the top 1%, make it 100K. Where do you want to be, you know, uh, based on where you are in life right now, where do you want to be, all right? If we talk about relationships and family, your choice of a mate or a friend will have as much or more to do with your success and happiness in life than any other decision you make. Relationships are powerful. Relationships are powerful. Don't go, oh, I've been waiting to be married for so long. Ah, this person just came up. Let me just marry them so I can keep up. I'm married. No. If you marry the wrong person, honestly. Anyway, ah, the Lord will save you. Okay, so questions you need to ask. What would your family look like? Right in a year's time, in five years' time, in ten years' time, what would they look like? All right, whom would you be with? Whom would you no longer be with in terms of friends and family? Right, maybe friends, all right? Family, well, you could may not talk to somebody, but they're still your family member. <laughs> Number three, where and how would you be living? What kind of home would you have? You know, I wanted to buy a house, 
And one of the most important things to me, besides having like a toilet on the ground floor, a driveway or something like that, is that there must, have, there must be a space for dining. As a family, I pictured myself, my wife, and my two kids sitting around the table and having dinner, having breakfast, having lunch, right? Now, sometimes we scatter all over the place, but I make sure that I did not buy a house that did not have a space for a dining table. And one of the first things that I bought into the new house was a dining table with lots of chairs so that I could sit down around the table with my family to have food. I, it was a goal. Like, I pictured it. It influenced my decisions when buying a house was concerned, and I got a house that gave me the opportunity to do that. What kind of home would you have? What kind of relationships would you have with the most important people in your life five years from now if everything were perfect in that respect? Think about health and wellness. How would you look and feel? Right? How would you look and feel? What would your ideal way to be? Somebody said that their goal is to be 80 kg. One of my goals in the health and wellness or well-being space is to maintain my weight of 87. I don't want to be less. I don't want to be more. When I went to do my checkup, they said, you are on point. I don't need any more. I don't need any less. Just stay that way. Now, 21 days of fasting is going to bring me down, but I will regulate thereafter. <laughs> so how much are you going to exercise each week? What would be your overall level of health? What changes would you have to start making today in your diet, in your exercise routines, and in your health habits to enjoy superb physical health sometime in the future? If you're thinking career, your choice of a boss is going to have a major impact on how much you earn, how fast you get ahead, and how happy you are at your job. All right? So if the current boss you have is not helping you in achieving your goals and your aspirations in life, Talk to the Lord. You might be like David who needs to stay with Saul, or you might not be like David who needs to stay to Saul and you need to move, all right? All right, so what, So thinking about your career, what additional knowledge and skills would you have acquired in a year's time? There was, last year, I set a goal to become a chartered fellow of the Chartered Institute of Personnel and Development because I, I wanted to demonstrate that I was a certain level you know, as a director in the field, and I achieved that goal. You know, for the whole year, they also doing stuff. I was like, look, this is a goal that I must achieve before this year is over. And I achieved the goal before the year was over. I celebrated it on LinkedIn and everywhere else, right? In what areas would you be recognized as absolutely excellent in what you do? What would you be doing each day in order to develop the knowledge and skills you need to be one of the top performers in your field sometime in the future? Those are questions you need to ask yourself when you are setting your goals. And finally, fun and recreation. What would you like to do on weekends and vacation? Some people don't even know how to book time off to just do nothing, to, to rest, to think, to meditate, to imagine their future, to just plan their lives, to sit back and just relax. Some people don't know how to relax. Listen to me. Fun and recreation are an important part of your life. How much time would you like to take off each week, each month, each year? Where would you like to go? You know, I... I, I came into the United Kingdom in December 2007. I walked into the house from, from the airport and my sister turned to me and said, so where can you travel in Europe? And I was like, I just have a UK visa. I can't go anywhere outside the UK. You know, yeah, yeah. You know, I said, I'm not, we're not outside the UK. And she was like, oh, you need to get a Schengen visa so that we can go here, we can go there, we can go there. I was like, I've not spent a day in the UK. You're talking about traveling all over the world. But I did go and get a Schengen visa to travel, you know, in Europe. Right? So where would you like to go? How would you organize your year if you had no limitations and complete control over your time? All right? We are still talking about this wheel of a balanced life. Okay? And so where I want to kind of finish, there are three things I want to finish with today. I'm going to rush through them because I can see the time. But I hope that, you know, anybody who can still stay to get these two major things I want to share with you. Because, you know, we did the 10 goals at the beginning. But I really want to, I, I was just doing that as an activity to kind of get you all, you know, into the game. But we now really want to get into this goal setting piece and kind of look at some of the principles and some of the steps that you need to take to set your goal. So you've seen this wheel of the balance of, and I'm sure that everybody has got a note of this. And obviously we're recording so you can you know, we'll find a way to put it on, on um, YouTube and make it private and then you, know, you can kind of access it and stuff later on. All right. So let's talk, let's talk goals, okay? Let's talk goals. So a, a goal is not a wish list, right? 
Uh, it is a clear, written, and specific target that you walk to every day. All right? Uh, the starting point, there are two things that I want you to remember, right? The starting point of goal setting is for you to realize that you have virtually unlimited potential to be, to have, or to do anything you really want in life if you simply want it badly enough. If God tells you, I want to do this for you, and you want it badly enough. Uh, okay, somebody has just asked me, how can they get the questions that I asked? That's a good question. Okay. At the end, I will post the questions into the chat so that you can copy them. All right? I will post the questions into the chat so that you can copy them. Somebody please remind me. At the end, I will post those questions that I asked into the chat so that you can copy the questions. All right? Now, you, you need to really want it, all right? You need to really want it. And you need to really walk. You need to be really interested in walking to get it. Whether it's walking hard enough or walking long enough to achieve what it is that you're setting down to do. So number one, you have unlimited potential. Nothing is stopping you. Somebody said this, nothing is stopping me. Nothing, absolutely nothing is stopping me. Now, the second part of goal setting is taking complete and absolute responsibility for your life, right? I cannot emphasize, emphasize that again enough. You are responsible for your life. You are responsible for your life. And you need to make sure that you want, you want to get there, right? Uh, as, a, as, a, as a student in university, I came across you know, financial independence. I was, I think, in my early 20s, and I set out a goal to be a millionaire in, in, in net income by the time I was 30. I was a student. I was collecting pocket money at the time, but I decided that I was going to be on a journey, which would take me about seven to eight years, I think, at the time. I think I must have been 21 or 22. It would take me seven to eight years to achieve, right, becoming a millionaire by the time that I was 30. So I knew that I had to walk my way day to day, month to month, year to year to achieve that millionaire status. And the lines began to fall to me in present places. The first thing that I did was to, you know, there was a bank, it was a new bank. They were getting, they were doing an initial public offering of their shares. And they said, you know, if you want to buy shares, come and buy the shares. I did not have the money to buy the shares, but I went to my dad and I said, look, this bank is putting out shares. I want money to buy the shares. My dad got me the form. He helped me to fill out the form. He gave me the money to pay for the shares. I said, I'm going to pay you back when I have enough money to pay you back. My father was so excited that I was buying shares. He didn't talk to me about this. I was doing this by myself. He was so blessed. He was so happy. He was so blown away that he told me I don't need to pay the money back. That is how I started my journey to becoming a millionaire. And I can tell you that I became a millionaire, net income, by the time before I was 27. Before my 27th birthday, I had become a millionaire, right? now. I relocated to the UK and my millions became thousands, right? So I am on my journey again to become a millionaire by a certain age, a millionaire in pounds by a certain age. Somebody says, how did I become a millionaire? Did, did somebody just wire me an inheritance or something like that? No, it was true investments. It was true buying and selling. But like I said, the lines fell to me in present places. And I did investments. I did high risk. I did low risk. I did medium risk. Everything kind of worked together. I say, if people give me money, I put it away into the investment. I was investing all the time, looking at new opportunities, and I eventually got this million uh, before I was, by the time I was 27, I become a millionaire, all right? So when you set your goals, like I said, be realistic about the time frame that you want to achieve the goals in, but you begin to do, you take responsibility for achieving that goal. You understand? You don't go, God, I set these goals. God, go to work. No, you go to work, all right? So those two things are important, all right? You realize that you have unlimited potential, to be, have, or do anything you really want in life, if you can be dedicated to it. And number two, you are responsible. You are completely responsible for your life and for everything that happens to you with no blaming of anybody and no excuses. All right? No blaming anybody, no excuses. Philippians 4.13 says, I can. All right? So let me write this in the chat. I want to know if you are still here. All right? Write in the chat, I can. I can. I can. I can, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If you believe you can, you can. If you believe you can, you can. If you believe you can, you can. And listen to me, 
you need to believe you can, right? Because if you're writing goals and you believe you can't, you know, you've already defeated yourself before you even started the journey. You need to believe you can. If there are things you want to see happen in 2024, you need to believe you can. Forget about all the things that people have told you is the reason why you cannot accomplish it. You can. You really can, right? If your goal is realistic, is backed up by God, you can. You can do all things that God has given you to do. Don't limit yourself. Believe in yourself. Believe in God. You can accomplish your goals, and God is with you. You see, there's a saying that one of the most um, important characteristics of leaders, of the most successful people in every area of life, is that they know who they are, what they believe in, and what they stand for. All right? They know who they are, they know what they believe in, and they know what they stand for. All right? So let's look at the seven keys to goal setting. And I said, you know, I'm going to flow through this as fast as I can so that we can finish this seminar uh, in a reasonable time. But I want to believe that um, this seminar has been a blessing to you, that you have picked a number of things that you can take away from the seminar. And, um, you know, so uh, it would be great to really hear from that. But let's talk about the seven keys or the seven principles to goal setting. The seven keys or the seven principles to goal setting. So the first key, right? So, you know, I told you, oh, do this, do that. So these are principles now that you need to follow when you're setting your goals. The first one is that your goals must be clear. They must be precise. They must be detailed. They must be specific and written down. You remember the story I shared at the beginning about the Harvard MBA program graduates? 3% wrote down their goals and ended up 10 times richer or any 10 times more than the 97% of the class, right? The other 13% had goals but didn't write them down and they were earning double what the others in the class, 84% were earning. The 84% just ended up wherever they ended up. But the 3% who actually wrote down their goals ended up 10 times better. Remember the story of Daniel and his friends in Daniel chapter one. They were 10 times better. You understand, right? Daniel and his friends, they must have written down their goals. Oh, Pastor Emmy, you're on this. And Daniel and his friends must have written down their goals. That's why they ended up 10 times better. Okay, seriously. God also helped them. God backed them up. But you need to write down your goals. All right, number two. So number one, your goals must be clear, specific, detailed, written down. Okay, that's number one. Number two, the, to, the number two key to goal setting is that your goals must be measurable and they must be objective, right? Measurable, don't, let's, don't get emotional about this thing. You understand? All your friends have done something, you're the only one, and therefore this thing, no, no, no. don't be emotional about this, be objective. Can you actually accomplish this thing this year or next year or in three years' time? Don't get emotional about wanting to rush it this year. No, no, no. When can you accomplish it? What is a reasonable prayer of dream which you can accomplish so that you can now focus on accomplishing it in that time frame, all right? Because you don't want to be disheartened. You don't have a thousand things you're trying to do and then you don't do them and you're kind of like, this thing doesn't work. No, it works. Most of the most successful people in the world today have set their goals and accomplished them year on year, month to month, and decade to decade. All right, your goals must be measurable and objective. The third key, is that your goals must be time-bounded. There must be a time frame. Remember what he said in Habakkuk 2, verse 3? It is for an appointed time, all right? There's an appointed time. So your goals must be time-bound, right? And not only must it be time-bound, you must have schedules, you must have deadlines, you must have sub-deadlines, all right? Don't just go, oh, yeah, I'm going to do this by June. Okay, what are the other things you need to do between now and June? You have to set deadlines for those things, you understand? So there will be sub-deadlines. There will be sub dates, you know. So you might set the date that, oh, by December 2024, I have done this. But, you know, when do you need to do the other bits by? You have to set those schedules, those deadlines, those sub deadlines in your goals, okay? Somebody says, I want to earn 10 to 20,000 this year. All right, what do you need to do to achieve that? And when, I, when are you going to achieve that by? What goal are you setting for yourself? All right, if you need to change jobs to earn 10 to 20 grand more, then you're going to say to yourself, okay, I'm going to start, when are you going to start applying? Or are you in the right position to apply? Do you need to get a certification? What, when do you get that certification by? And then when are you going to start applying for the jobs? When are you looking to get that job by? When are you looking to change that salary by? So that by the end of this year, you can say, it's happened. All right? It's happened. 
it's happened. Okay, number four, the fourth key is that your goals must be challenging. All right, don't set a goal that will not even make you drop a sweat, as it were. All right, your goals should have 50% chance of success. All right, 50% chance. Don't set a goal that is impossible. Set a goal for which you will have 50% chance of success. That's so important, 50% chance of success on your goals, all right? So set your goals within your means, unless God is asking you to go for something outside of your means, all right? There's a divine or supernatural element to goal setting as well. So if God is not asking you to do that, speak within your means. What can you achieve by stretching? You know, your goals should stretch you. Your goals should apply some pressure on you to kind of break out of your current mode in order to achieve it. Your goal should force you to develop and to grow in order for you to achieve it. Your goal should force you to make sacrifices. Your goal should force you to pay a price, all right? You may not have to sacrifice your child, your only child, but your goal should push you into achieving something phenomenal, all right? But don't set unrealistic goals. Like I said, don't set something that is impossible for you to achieve. All right. When I told you that I was going to, I was setting a goal to be a millionaire, I told you that look, it was a long period of time. I was a student at the time. It was a long period, but I, but I put things in place to help me achieve it. I achieved it in a far shorter period of time. All right. The fifth key is that your goals must be consistent with your values and in harmony with each other. Your goals must be consistent with your values. You know, earlier I talked about integrity, where achieving something in the workplace was concerned. Your goals must be consistent with your values. All right. Don't, don't, try and cheat people into becoming richer. Don't try and cheat people into getting into a relationship. Don't try and deceive people. Don't, you know, don't do, don't go through, um, you know, breaking the law or breaking rules and regulations you know, to, to try and achieve your goals. They need to be consistent with your values. They need to be in harmony with each other, all right? You can't have a goal to slim down in 2024 and at the same time have a goal to visit all the restaurants in London. You know, it, it, I'm not sure how you're going to achieve that. Slimming down and going to all the restaurants in London seem to be goals that are contrary to each other as an example, all right? It might be like an extreme example, but just reflect on your goals, all right? Are there things that you're saying you want to achieve in one area that is going to be contrary to something you want to achieve in another area? Number six, the key is that your goals must be balanced around those areas of the balanced life that we share, career or business, your financial life, your family, your health, your spiritual life, your growth, your ministry, your education, or like I said, if you're not studying, then you can put fun and entertainment, right? What do you want to achieve in those areas of fun and entertainment, all right? It's important that you think about that and that you reflect on that, all right? And finally, the seventh key is that you must have a definite major purpose for your life. We talked about this earlier. What is that one thing that you must accomplish in life, okay? The seven keys that you must have a major definite purpose for your life. You see, after, after you have completed your 10 goals, or, or, or you know, if you want to do more goals for the year, that's fine. But after you have completed your 10 goals, you need to go over that list and ask yourself this question. What's one goal on this list? If I were to accomplish it immediately or in a short period of time will have the greatest impact on my life. That is a question you need to answer. What one goal will have the greatest impact, will, will meet the most, uh, will have the, the most strategic impact on your life? Of the goals that you've written, which one of them will have the most strategic impact, will have the greatest impact on your life and may even influence your ability to achieve all the other goals. You see, in every case, one goal is your major definite purpose. All right? It is that one goal that has the greatest impact on your life. And on achieving that goal, it will have an impact on all the other goals at the same time. All right? What is that one goal? So when you look at your 10 goals that you've set already, if you look at all of them and you do not have a major definite purpose for your life in any of these 10, you kind of need to take a step back and ask yourself, what is that one goal that if you achieve it in this year will, will have the greatest impact on your life, right? Will help you to achieve the, the most strategic impact on your life. What is that goal? Uh, and you need to make sure that you've got that, right? Um, 
major on the majors and minor on the minors, right? If that goal is not on that list, you kind of need to take a step back and ask yourself, uh, what is that goal? All right, clear goals, a plan to achieve them will stop you from chasing pipe dreams and put you to work digging gold, right? Clear goals and a plan to achieve them will stop you chasing fairies, butterflies, fantasies, and will get you doing something really solid, right, in your life. And when you've reached your goals, kind of reflecting on the, on the seven keys, one of the things you need to ask yourself is, how? When you, when, you, when you write down these 10 goals, I'll just keep referring to 10 goals, but you can do more. And, and if you want to, you can do less. But if you think about the eight areas of your life and think about something, at least one thing that you want to achieve in those areas, right? And when you've written the goals, ask yourself how, right? How are you going to achieve them? And allow your mind to just blow up. Because when you ask yourself how, you know, it will stimulate your creative juices. It will start allowing things that you never even thought of to begin to flow into your mind. You know, I talked about the fact that somebody might be looking to be debt-free and they're thinking, okay, to be debt-free, I need to earn more money. And then you start thinking to yourself, how can I earn more money in 2024? You know, kind of, how can I do this? How, 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 how? You know, and to be honest with you, when you set those goals, like I said, the lines will fall to you. You will have certain encounters that will help you to achieve your goals. But your creativity and ideas are triggered uh, and stimulated when you start thinking how, the how question about the goals that you want to achieve. So those are seven principles that you need to keep in mind when you are setting your goals, all right? And um, this is my, this is the, I believe this is the final thing that I want to share with you now. Uh, so this is the 12 steps, all right? So I've given you the principles, right? Those principles, Underline your goal setting, all right? But these are the steps to achieve, to set and to achieve any goal, okay? All right. So, so I remember in 2012, I wanted to earn more money, all right? I wanted to earn more money. I wanted to earn more money. And so I asked myself, okay, if I want to earn more money in my career, how can I do that? All right, I need to change my status, all right? So I wanted to earn maybe like 20 grand more, something like that. I said, for me to earn or 10 grand more, I think it must have been 10, five to 10 grand more uh, that year. So I thought, okay, for me to do that, I need to kind of uh, upgrade my status in my career. And one way to upgrade my status in my career, besides the experience and knowledge that I already had, was to get chartered membership of the CIP, right? And I thought, okay, how can I get chartered membership of the CIP? So I wrote to the CIP and said, I want to get chartered membership of the CIP. And I said, oh, you're missing some modules, right? So I'd done a master's degree in 2008, 2009, and so they said, you're missing some modules. So, that, so I thought, okay, I have to go back. I had to go back to uni to study a module on employee relations. Thankfully, I had a, like a going relationship with one of the former, my former lecturers. I was able to get in touch with them and say, look, I need to do this. I need to achieve this. So I said, okay, you can come and register for the module. I registered for the module. I got a merit in the module. I went back to them and I said, look, I've done that module. And they said, great. Now you've got your graduate membership of the CIPD. I thought, okay, great. What do I need to do to get chartered membership? Well, I need to write a paper and I need to get my colleagues at work to write some feedback about my work. And I need to submit this for assessment. And if they feel that I've reached that level, then they will grant me chartered membership. So I had to go to my boss at work. I had to go to another colleague and I had to get them to help me write this paper to kind of support my application, which they did. I put that forward and I got my chartered membership of the CIPD. Obviously, this took me time to go to school to study, to get the to get the module results, to go back to the CIPD. This took me a bit of time. Eventually, I got my chartered membership, changed my status everywhere, put the acronyms on the back of my name on LinkedIn everywhere so I could think of, you know. And in 2023, a management position came up. I applied for the management position. I got the management position. My salary changed, right? All of those things kind of work together to help me to achieve my goal of increasing my salary by five to 10,000 uh, pounds, right? So there is a process, right? And those are the steps I kind of just want to uh, highlight to you right now, right? There are steps you need to take that will help you to achieve any goal. So number one, have a desire, right? The fact that you were able to write your 10 goals at the beginning means that you have desire. So you must have a desire. What do you really want? What do you really want? Have a desire 
uh, make sure it's a strong desire. What do you really want? That's number one. Number two, believe that your goal is achievable. We've talked about, you know, we're taking off the idea that there's any limit uh, to your potential, to your capability to achieve this. Just, just remove that and think, I want to achieve this goal. You know, and then number three, write your goal down, okay? Have a desire, believe that your goal is achievable, write down your goal, okay? I've put down some goals that, that look crazy at the time that I put them down, you know, and with the help of God, I was able to achieve those goals. I've come to the place where I am standing in those goals now because they are now in my life, all right? Then you go to number four, determine where you need to begin. What is your starting point, all right? When I set that goal to increase my salary by five to 10,000 pounds, I knew that my starting point is that I do not have the, the recognition in my field that I need to have, all right? I may have experience, I may have the knowledge, but I need recognition. That was my starting point. And so I was able to plan how to get to that 10,000 pounds from the starting point. Number four, you need to know where to begin. What is your starting point? You want to start exercising you know, every day. What is your starting point? You want to read a book every day what is, or every month. What is your starting point? Where are you starting? Where are you going to start from? You might say, I want to read a book every day this month. Okay, what book? Which books? Books on what? You know, what is your, do you need to decide books, which books, what kind of books you're going to read? Are they going to be spiritual books, leadership development books, personal development books, career development books, what books? What is your starting point? You need to understand where you are starting or where you're beginning your journey. All right, number five, determine why you want it. You know, your, 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 your motivations are the few that keep you going. If you don't, if you're just putting a goal for a goal's sake, nothing is going to drive you to chase that goal. You understand? And even when you face some obstacles in your life, you're not going to be motivated to keep going because there's nothing driving you. So number five, determine why you want it. Why do you want this goal? Number six, set a deadline. All right? The deadline helps you to work. All right? If you set a goal for 100 years, honestly, Jesus probably might have come before that time. You know, so you need to set a goal and you need to set a deadline for your goal. When do you want to accomplish this by so that you can work with that day? He says he runs who reads it but the vision is for an appointed time, okay? So when do you want to accomplish this goal by? All right, number seven, identify the obstacles in your way. What are the obstacles to you achieving your goal? What are the challenges that you're likely to face? Can you identify those challenges and can you begin to plan or navigate those challenges right from, right from the start, okay? So this is a bit of work, you know? You can't do all this work in this seminar because we'll be here till like 5 p.m., but you can take this work away and go and process this thing. Listen to me. It is very, very important that you write down your goals, you plan them, and then you execute them, all right? But these are the seven, the 12 steps that will help you to kind of set that going and to help you achieve it. Are you with me? All right, so number six, number seven, identify the obstacles in your way. And number eight, determine the additional knowledge and skills that you need, all right? I was in a place where I felt like I had what I needed to get the salary, but I needed some recognition. That's what was missing. I went away and I got the recognition. Obviously, in getting the qualification and in doing more work, I developed even more in my skills and in my knowledge, and I got more exposure that helped me to get that management position. Right? But you need to determine the additional knowledge and skills you need. If you're trying to become debt-free, how much do you actually know about being debt-free? All right? Do you need to go and study that a bit more so that you can be better equipped to become debt-free? All right. If you want to get a qualification, what do you need to do to get that qualification? All right. Determine the additional knowledge and skills that you need. Number eight, and that's number eight. Number nine, determine the people whose help you will need. Whose help are you going to need to achieve your goal? Whose help are you going to need to achieve your goal? Right. We, we wanted to get a millionaire to come and speak to the men in church for our Father's Day event, you know, uh, last year, and we had to go through somebody who knew somebody who knew a millionaire to come and speak to the man. All right? At that point in time, I did not know a millionaire in pounds or dollars or anything like that that could come up. Well, okay, I take that back. I think I do, but I needed somebody of a certain caliber to come and speak to us, right? That would be inspiring and motivational and, you know, encouraging for the men in church. So I went to go look for a millionaire, and that person came and spoke to us, right? So what, who, who do you need? 
who do you need? You know, I was having a conversation with somebody recently and, you know, the conversation kind of led to, okay, I'll, I'll talk to somebody in my workplace and see if there's an opportunity for something. And you know, to be honest with you, I just thought, look, you know, it's not going to do anything. I just told the person, the person, hey, 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 send them, send them, send them. You know, and then the person went there and it went beautifully well. It went better than I expected, to be honest. I, I did not, I was not expecting, oh, how would I put it? I believe for favor, but what came out of the whole thing was far down, more than what I imagined. You know, and the Bible says God is able to do more than what you imagine. All right, so determine the people's help you will need. And then, you know, God will connect you to people. All right? And number 10, make a plan. You know, I talk about the fact that you need to write your goal. You know, you need to be disadvantaged, but you need to make a plan, right? And a plan is a set of tasks, a set of activities that will help you to achieve the goal. The plan is a set of tasks, is a set of activities that will help you to achieve the goal, all right? The plan will help you put everything together, okay? The plan will help you put everything together, all right? Number 11, visualize your goal continually. Visualize your goal continually. I have this poster on, on my board here. It is one of my goals, uh, one of my long-term goals, very long-term goals. I have it on my uh, wardrobe as well in the room. When I go into the room, I see it. It's in front of me. It's a long-term goal. I don't want to lose track of it. It's easy to see all the other short-term and medium-term goals. This long-term goal, I want to keep seeing it, and I want to keep imagining how it's going to happen, how it's going to come to pass, so that you know the lines are falling to me in present places for those things to happen. Number 11, visualize your goal continually. Keep it in front of you. People talk about having dream boards, vision boards, have a goal board, have an image for all the different things you want to achieve. You know, if you want it, you know, five to 10,000 pounds this year, go on, go to Google, type 5,000 or 10,000 pounds, click on images and you will see money. Get a photo of 10,000 pounds. I'll put it in front of you, right? If you're looking to get into a relationship and to get married, go on Google, look for some family that, you know, kind of represents you a bit. And if you, if you know, if you have a friend who is an editor, you know, you can tell the friend, please let me remove that person's head and put my head. <laughs> and I have a photo of a, mar you know, a family, right, that you're looking at that is encouraging you where your life is concerned. And finally, number 12, never give up. Never. Never give up. Listen to me. Challenges will come. You know, I told you that, you know, I was aiming... I, I had a goal to be a millionaire by 30 and I achieved it by 27. Listen to me, I lost money. In, in trying to achieve that goal, I lost hundreds of thousands. I'm telling you, if I didn't lose the hundreds of thousands, maybe I'll have been like multi, multi millionaire. But in some of the investments that were high risk, I lost hundreds of thousands. I lost thousands. I lost hundreds of thousands. But you know what? It did not stop me from continuing in the journey to achieve my goal. And I still got to my goal three years earlier than planned. So don't let, you know, the challenges, the setbacks, the disappointments, rejections stop you from pressing on. Don't give up. Oh, you need to write this, actually. Please let me write it in the chat. If you can, you're not driving, you know, you don't have your hand in the pot. Let me write, don't give up. Don't give up. Never give up. All right, I need to just see it popping up in the chat. Never give up, never give up, never give up, never give up, never, 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 never. All right, never give up. Don't give up, never give up. I'm not going to do that. Never give up, never give up, all right? Keep plowing ahead with your goals. Keep plowing ahead with the things you want to accomplish. Keep plowing ahead with the things that you want to do in your life. Please, can you just give me a moment? Thank you. Sorry about that. Just needed to attend to something. Okay, so never give up. Don't give up. Don't let anything stand in your way. Don't let any obstacle or any challenge make you turn back. 
from the goal that you are setting, all right? If you need to, go and spend some time talking to God. You know, Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane said, ah, let this cup pass over me, but nevertheless, your will and not my will, all right? So sometimes you need to go talk to God to just get some more, you know, encouragement, inspiration, you know, talk to friends who are able to encourage you as iron sharpens iron, as so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. I am going to put all of these different links. I know, I know we're recording and people will be able to access the recording, but I would try and you know, just copy and paste some of this list in the Sonny. chat. Well, Sonny, yeah. I've been yeah. typing everything in the chat as we've been going along. Can okay. you just roll right. the first three um, of this 12, please, again? Sorry. All right. So number one is have a desire. What do you really want? All right. Number two is believe that your goal is achievable. All right. Number three is write your goal down. That okay? Number four, determine where you need to begin. What's your starting point? All right. Yeah. Number five, determine why you want it. Right. What's your motivation? Number six, set a deadline. Uh, number seven, identify the obstacles in your way. Number eight, determine the additional knowledge or skills you need. Number nine, determine the people's help you will need. And uh, number ten, make a plan, a set of tasks or activities that you need to do to achieve your goal. Your plan helps you put everything together. Number 11, visualize your goal continually. You have to keep seeing it, keep it in front of you. Number 10, never. Actually, number 12, never give up, never. All right? Never give up. Never, never, never give up. Okay? So I thought we'll have time. I was going to ask you to take one of your goals you wrote earlier and break it down further. You know, I'm looking at the time and I'm like, man, you know, how long can these people stay in this seminar before they're like, ah, oh, this is too much. You know, uh, but if you can, we, we, I can give you two minutes, two minutes, two minutes, right? Two minutes, two minutes. You know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to aim for us to finish um, uh, twelve thirty if we can, because we've been, we've been going at this since ten. But like I said, I want to believe that this has been very helpful for you. I want to believe that you've been able to get something out of this that you can take away and use it to do something in your life and. Encourage your friends, your family. If you have kids, encourage your kids. I've got my 12-year-old son, you know, in this seminar. I'm like, look, you know, they've already set their goals for the year and they've already set their faith projects for the year. But I'm like, look, you need to attend this session to kind of hear what I'm talking about to everyone else because it's never too early to kind of start thinking this way. You understand? You know, it's never too early to start thinking like this. So, you know, they said we should catch them young. So take one of the goals you wrote earlier, based on the things that I've shared with you, the seven keys, the 12 steps, I want you to break down that goal further. So, you know, somebody talk about, you know, becoming debt-free. Can you break down becoming debt-free a bit further, you know, just using, reflecting on the, the 12 steps, right? Reflecting on the top steps, uh, reflecting on the keys, the principles, how are you going to achieve uh, debt freedom? Uh, somebody talk about earning 30 grand a year, how are you going to achieve that? Somebody talked about getting involved in missions in 2024. How are you going to achieve that? Somebody talked about um, earning five to 10,000 pounds more. How are you going to achieve that? You know, I need to just break that down a bit. What are the different steps? Just, just give it some, some thought, you know, for another minute. All right, we're going to stop at uh, 1224. Just, just do that. Just break it down a bit. Break it down a bit. Break it down a bit. Like I said, I'm aiming for a 1230 finish break it down a bit, you know, what are the things that you, what are the things that you need to do, you know, to kind of achieve that goal, right? What are the things that you think you need to do, right? And it doesn't matter if you don't know everything now, just write down what you know and breaking that down a bit further, all right? Okay, I know it's, I know it's a quick one, that, you know, break it down for I'm like, oh yeah, I need to go away and just, you know, give it some time to, to flesh this out and break it and break it and break it and break it. But this is the thing. The more you think about your goal and the more you ask yourself how, 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 how. You're right, okay, I need to get a new job. How? Okay, I need to apply for a new job. How? Okay, I need to get this qualification. How? Okay, I need to talk to that person. How? All right, I need to go to that, to that place to talk. How? You just keep at how, 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 how. Until you get to the first step that you need to take, keep asking yourself how. How, how, like you're breaking down the goals, you're breaking them down, you're putting plans of what you're going to do. Just keep asking yourself, how are we going to do this? 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 Until you get to the first step that you need to take. 
And let me tell you this. Once you start aiming for something, the lines start falling to you in pleasant places, you know? Somebody shared something with me in December, and I was talking to somebody about something else, and the person told me something. And I was like, oh, I did not know that. I need to go and tell this other person I was talking to in December, and I'm saying this in my mind, I need to go and share this information with this other person because that information is going to help that person to achieve their goals, right? And the reason why that information was relevant to me was because that person actually told me something about what they wanted to achieve in an area of their life, right? And so when this person was telling me, it, it, the, the two pieces of information connected. So the reality is that you're going to need people to help you to achieve your goals. That's, that's it. But you just need to be careful who it is that you're sharing your goals with, who it is you're talking to your goals about, because you need people who can inspire, who can encourage you to achieve your goals. So I gave you two extra minutes there to kind of break your goal down. But I wanted you to practice it now, as opposed to like forgetting about it and then say, oh yeah, we've done the seminar, let's move on with our lives. No, I wanted you to practice it now. Try it now. Do something now so that it can become ingrained in you. Okay? Now, I've, I've said so many things. <laughs> to you today and it's recorded and I said I was going to put the questions in the chat at the end so that you can copy the questions, you know, but I just want to leave you with this, right? Finally, write down your goals, make your plans to achieve them, and then work on your plans every single day, right? Now you might miss a day or two, you might even miss a week, but you know what? Bring it back. Keep find a way to keep it in front of you. Make it your make it your screensaver so that every time you want to get into your laptop, boom, your goals are looking at you and are kind of going, yes, yes, those are my goals. Make, make it your your phone screensaver. Make it the background of your WhatsApp where you are all the time. Write them down, paste them on the wall, and see them all the time. All right. And I, and I, and I was quite um, you know when I was about to start the session today. Uh, you know, it was just on my heart that we should just take a, a moment to pray before we go. You know, this is the end. I'm going to paste uh, those questions about those different areas of life and everything. But I wanted us to just take a moment to pray before we go. All right. And it, it's so important. And I was, I was saying to the Lord, okay, we want to pray. What scripture are we going to use to pray? And then this scripture kind of jumped at me. So um, I'm going to share that with you. I'm just going to put those questions in different areas. Oh, it says my, okay, it says it's too long. Okay, I'm going to take my time to do that. Then. It's too long for me to do it in one go. All right, so I'm going to read Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. All right, I don't have it on the screen because this was way after I'd done my uh, slides. It says, this is a classic amplified version of the Bible as well. It says, lean on, trust in, and be confident in the Lord with all your heart, right? And, and mind, lean on, trust in, and be confident in the Lord with all your heart and mind. And do not rely on your own insight or understanding. In all your ways, know, recognize, and acknowledge him, and he will direct and make straight and plain your heart. And so before I leave you today, or before you leave me today, I just want us to take some time to pray wherever you are you know i want you to just you know bow your head if you can if you're driving do not bow your head you know but if you're somewhere where you can just bow your head you can just have a private moment of prayer to god it says in all your ways know recognize acknowledge him and he will direct and make straight your and plain your part and so i want you to do that trust in the Lord. we for us to set goals for the year, we need to trust God where our goals are concerned and trust God that he wants to do something really phenomenal in your life in 2024. And so I want you to just take, take some time to pray and say, Lord, 2024, I, I trust you and all my plans, all my goals, all my aspirations, my motivations, I just surrender them to you now. I recognize you uh, in my goals for 2024. I, I know that you have a purpose and a plan for my life. And I ask you to have your way. You know, the Bible says you will direct your path. Lord, I ask you to direct my path. I ask you to guide me. I ask you to show me the way to go. I ask you to show me what to do. Show me what to aim for. Show me what to reach for. Show me what to desire. Show me, you know, where I should be in the next year. Where do you want me to be in the next five years? You know, I just want you to take some time to talk to God and 
you know, while you're talking to God, I'm going to put uh, those questions in the chat from different areas. But I want you to talk to God. You know, where you know where do you see God taking you? Where do you see God bringing you? Trust Him, commit everything to Him, and He said He will direct your path. He will bring you. Um, you know, the Bible says that if you commit your ways uh, to the Lord. Uh, he will establish them, right? So I just want you to talk to the Lord right now and just say, Lord, you know, I direct my ways to you. I surrender my life to you. I know whatever it is that I want to do in 2024, you know, Lord, have your way. Lord, you know, do something new in my life. You know, uh, 2023 is gone. This is a new year. And, you know, I'm looking forward to, to new things. It's a new year. And I'm looking forward to new things. So just talk to the Lord right now. And I know that you know, God is going to establish you. God is going to settle you. Uh, God is going to do the things that you desire for him to do as we trust in him with all our hearts and we lean to him in our understanding of the things we want to accomplish. Uh, Father, we give you thanks and praise for this. Uh, we are grateful. For all the things that have been shared today, and my prayers are for everyone who is under the sound of my voice, that you will reveal your plans and your purpose to them, uh, bit by bit, line upon line, precept upon precept, so that they can walk in the fullness of it. I pray for them as they, you know, walk with you to set goals for 2024, that their lives will become far better, far richer, far, far wiser, far more spiritual, far more close to you. They will accomplish the things that they set out to do. And most of all, that their lives will bring glory to your name in Jesus' name. I pray for everyone who may not know you well enough, that they will come to know you. I pray for those who may not be saved, that they will come to be saved in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Um, once again, thank you so much for joining. This is Kingswood International Church. Uh, I'm Emmy Akilaja. I'm the senior pastor of the church. Uh, we've put some, uh, some of our links uh, in the chat, I would like you to connect with us. Maybe you can connect with us on YouTube, on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, on TikTok, on Google, on MixLR. And uh, this is our email address. Let me just send you the email address. If people have been asking me, how do we get the recording? If you send an email to the email address asking for the recording, then we'll send the recording to you. I think, or maybe what we'll do is I will just send the recording to everybody who's registered. So if you're registered, you'll be able to get the recorded, right? Maybe we'll just do that. We'll just ping the link. So we're going to upload the link to YouTube. Uh, it's going to be private, so you won't be able to see it if you go there, but we'll send the link to everyone who has joined the session. And anybody who wants to, once you give them the link, they'll be able to access it even though it's private. All right? We won't publish it to everyone, but everybody who goes on there will be able to access it. You know? So thank you very much. Like I said, connect to us on one of our social media platforms. Uh, thank you so much for joining. Uh, so many people stayed all the way to the end. Uh, it's great to really have you here. And um, yeah, uh, if you do not have a church you call home, we will be very happy to welcome you. Or just be us visit on a Sunday at 10 a.m. Uh, you know, in Charlton. You can find our details on our social media platforms. We would like to post to you. And uh, yeah, uh, for everyone who's in Kingswood, London, it's Visual Sunday tomorrow. I'm going to be going a step further than I've done today, you know, talking about, you know, receiving visions from God and the vision that God has given us. Uh, for 2024, the goals we're looking to, to um, achieve in the new year. So, uh, yeah, we look forward to hosting you. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Taiwo, uh, for anchoring and administrating today. Uh, great to have you online. Thank you so much, everyone, and all the best uh, for 2024. Maybe we're going to have a, maybe we'll have a check-in session middle of the year, and we'll invite everybody to come back. We'll do a check-in in July, and uh, we'll see where everybody has gotten to with their goals. That would be nice. To do a check in and see where everybody has gotten to with their goals. So, until then, uh, have a wonderful uh, 2024. Have a wonderful 2024. Thank you very much, everyone, and uh, look forward to seeing you uh, in the future. Bye for now. And like I said, feel free to um, visit us anytime. We would love to, love to, love to, love to have you at one of our services. Bye for now, everybody. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play for, I'm, play, I'm gonna play some music as people. Um, I'm going to play a song called Better Days as people exit. All right. So bye, everyone.
and uh, all the best for all the best for the, the new year. All right. Bye, everybody. A heart speed to the city streets. We begin to feel the fire. We rise like tall buildings as the chemicals they take us higher.